President Abdullah Saeed, Secretary General Antonio Guterres, distinguished delegates, I am extremely delighted to join you at SDG Moment 2021, and I am grateful for inviting me to this special occasion. A research institute of the United Nations recently released a report that found that all disasters in the world are interconnected. For instance, the heat wave in the Arctic and cold wave in Texas, as well as the COVID-19 pandemic and cyclone Ampan that hit Bangladesh, are closely connected with one another through the links of carbon emissions and environmental destruction. If the problems are interconnected, then so be the solutions. When humanity transcends national boundaries to work together, that in and of itself would be a first step towards surmounting a crisis. Right in this hall six years ago, the UN agreed to adopt the Sustainable Development Goals, and two years ago, it proclaimed the Decade of Action until 2030. Humanity's strides towards an inclusive future were held back by COVID-19. Yet, ironically, it was the very pandemic that brought home the desperate need for SDGs. Our commitment to action grew stronger. We must move ourselves beyond simply overcoming the crisis to build back better and stronger. If actions that we take together are interconnected, we will deliver without a doubt. First. Our commitment to inclusion and mutual prosperity must be immediately put into action now. That action can begin with an equitable access and distribution of COVID-19 vaccines by the international community. At G7, the Republic of Korea made a $200 million pledge to COVAX AMC. As one of the global vaccine hubs, we are committed to making continued endeavors to expand vaccine supply and support. Taking a step further, we stand ready to actively contribute to strengthening international health cooperation at WHO, among others. Second, we must collaborate beyond our borders in responding to the climate crisis. Our planet is getting hotter faster than anticipated, with extreme weather events occurring one after another in every part of the world. Carbon neutrality is a goal that developed and developing countries alike must move towards in tandem. To this end, leading countries in climate action must partner with developing countries by sharing their experiences and transferring technologies. Korea plans to finalize its 2050 carbon neutrality scenario by the end of October and submit its updated NDC at COP26. Korea will scale up Green New Deal ODA and share its experience and technology as a nation that has grown from a developing to a developed one, thus actively supporting developing countries in their endeavors towards green recovery and carbon neutrality. Third, sustainable development demands that we fully harness the fourth industrial revolution technologies. Digital technologies and infrastructure, however, engender new divides and inequalities at the same time. Addressing the digital gap and inequalities thus presents another challenge of our time. These are the problems that we also encounter in energy transition process. Our digital and green transitions, therefore, must be inclusive and leave no one behind. Lastly, we must respect our future generations and gather the wisdom for intergenerational coexistence. We must move beyond our differences in ideas and cultures across generations, all generations, as we strive to transcend the boundaries of nationality, race, and gender, to communicate and connect to one another, must recognize that, after all, we are part of a global community for poverty, inequality, climate change, and other crises that remain unresolved by older generations, the voices of future generations must be heard more attentively, as so doing would indeed be a duty asked of the older generations. Fearing change, the older generations have left many problems unsolved, yet the younger generation's sensitivity and capacity for empathy may find us the solutions.
We must not forget, in particular, that the future belongs to our future generations. Joining us today are an exceptionally outstanding group of young men who are connecting with the youth across the world, BTS, in the capacity as a special presidential envoy for future generations and culture. Together with BTS, the first ever special envoy from the private sector, I hope today's gathering will serve as an opportunity to mobilize the future's generation's goodwill and action towards sustainable development. Guided by the conviction that no one is safe until everyone is safe, the Korean people will join the journey of inclusive international cooperation as your most reliable, steadfast companion, leaving no one behind. Thank you. So I am going to introduce the next speaker to the podium. Probably the artist that is most loved by people around the world. Uh, who have been designated as the Special Presidential Envoy for Future Generations and Culture. We're going to listen to their story, the BTS. Your Excellency Abdullah Shahid, President of the 76th United Nations General Assembly, Your Excellency Secretary General Antonio Guterres, Your Excellency President Moon Jae-in, and distinguished leaders from around the world. It is an honor to be here today, where BTS appointed a special presidential envoys of the Republic of Korea. We're here today to share the stories of our future generation. Before we came here, we asked the young people in their teens and 20s around the world about their past two years and about the world they find themselves in today. Jin will share some of the answers we received. Yes, should we take a look? You can feel the good vibes from just looking at these. There were times during the past two years when I, too, felt bewildered and troubled. But still here, we have people who cry out, let's live on, let's make the best of this moment. Because we can't stand still when we are in the ideal time of our lives to take on new challenges. It wasn't as if we could blame anyone, and you must have felt the frustration. Here, I'm the same as I was yesterday, but the world changed like we were transported in a flash to a parallel world. I was saddened to hear that entrance and graduation ceremonies had to be canceled. These are moments in life you want to celebrate, and missing out on them must have been upsetting. We were heartbroken when our long-planned concert tours were canceled, and for a while we yearned for the moments we wanted to make complete. Yes. It was a time for us to mourn for the things that COVID took away from us, a time to discover how, how precious each and every moment we taken for granted were. Suga mentioned the precious things we taken for granted, and lots of people answered our question by sharing pictures of their precious moments. Many people showed how they share their moments with nature. I think during these two years, they found dear the time they experienced and care for nature. Yes, but 
Maybe because we feel an encroaching sense of dread that our time on this earth is limited, we just talked about the things we mourn, and I shudder to think about mourning for the earth. Everyone agrees that climate change is an important problem, but talking about what the best solution might be, that's not easy. It's a topic that's tough to make conclusions about. Yes, it is a tough discussion, but I learned while preparing for today that there are many young people who have an interest in environmental issues and choose it as their field of study. The future is unexplored territory, and that's where we, more than anyone, will spend our time. So these young people were searching for the answers to the question of how we must live that future. So I hope we don't just consider the future as grim darkness. We have people who are concerned for the world and searching for the answers. There are still many pages left in the story about us, and I think thought we shouldn't talk like the ending's already been written. Of course, sometimes the world seems stuck in place, even if you're ready to go. Sometimes it feels like you've lost your way. There was a time when we felt the same way. I've heard that people in their teens and 20s today are being referred to as COVID's lost generation, that they're They've lost their way at a time when they need the most diverse opportunities and must try new things. But I think it's a stretch to say they're lost just because the paths they tread can't be seen by grown-up eyes. Yes, take a look at these pictures. Here we have many who are trying hard to continue their friendships online in new ways, start learning new things, live healthier lives. I'm sorry, excuse me. Yes, these kids are trying to learn new things and trying to figure new things out. Uh, they don't look lost. They look like they are finding new courage and taking on new challenges. I think that's why instead of the lost generation, a more appropriate name would be the welcome generation. Because instead of fearing change, this generation says welcome and keeps forging ahead. That's right. If we believe in possibilities and hope, even when the unexpected happens, we will not lose our way but discover new ones. There will be choices we make that may not be perfect, but that does not mean there will be nothing we can do. That's what I think. What is important are the choices we make when we are faced with change, right? Some of you heard the news that we're coming to the UN, and a lot of you were wondering whether we have been vaccinated. And I'll take this opportunity to say yes. All seven of us, of course, we received vaccinations. The vaccination was a, a sort of ticket to meeting our fans waiting for us and to being able to stand here before you today. Just like we said in our message today, we too are doing the things that we're able to do right now. Like the vaccinations, efforts are continuously underway to keep this new reality going forward. And I think the day we can meet again face to face is not far away. Until then, I hope we can fill each of our, each of our days to the brim with positive energy. We thought the world had stopped, but it continues to move forward. I believe that every choice we make is the beginning of change, not the end. I hope that in this nascent new world, we can all say to each other, welcome. And now, as we look forward to this future, the permission to dance is our message of welcome that we want to share with everyone today. So that opinion, when your heart's just like a drum, beating louder with no way to guard it. When it all seems like it's wrong, say it louder out the joint to the feeling which is getting started. And when the nights get colder, and the rhythm starts to fall in behind, just dream up a dead moment when you look.
Amém.